welcome to my new series, Still Missing. The majority of unsolved cases that I'll bring to you are from the UK. Now, I'm well aware of the numerous disappearances in the USA, especially people vanishing from national parks. Perhaps I will cover these in another series. So let us start with a case which seems, over the years, it's almost been forgotten. But I think a lot of you will relate to this mysterious case. It is, of course, the disappearance of Jeanette Tate. I remember vividly the week she went missing. It was 1978, and each day after I returned from school, I would read about any developments from the pages of the Daily Mirror. At school, we would talk about her disappearance. Inwardly, we were haunted by the notion that she'd been taken. For many days, I expected the newspaper to deliver the news that her body had been found. Now that I'm much older, I see things in a different light. Things aren't necessarily black and white. There is far more to this story. So let us start at the beginning. Jeanette Louise Tate was born on the 5th of May, 1965, in Taunton in Somerset. She was the only child born to John and Sheila Tate. At the time of Jeanette's birth, the Tate family lived in Taunton. Uh, well, yes, lived in Taunton, but it was a, a suburb of Wedlands. For a short period of time, they relocated to Cornwall before moving to Devon. Jeanette's parents parted company when she was young, and her father remarried. She lived with her father, stepmother Violet, and stepsister Tanya at Barton Farm Cottage in the East Devon village of Aylesborough, which is eight miles from Exeter. After her parents' separation, Jeanette maintained regular contact with her mother. Now to the day she disappeared. Prior to the following events, Jeanette collected newspapers from a delivery van at the White Horse Inn. Jeanette disappeared while delivering newspapers shortly after 3.30 p.m. And that's British summer time. And that was on Saturday the 19th of August 1978. At approximately 3.28 p.m., two school friends, Margaret Heavey and Tracy Pratt, saw Jeanette walking along Withen Lane, pushing her bicycle. Jeanette had delivered 14 newspapers by this point and conversed briefly with her friends as they ascended the lane. At the top of the hill, Jeanette mounted her bicycle and rode ahead as her friends paused to read an article in a the newspaper they had been given. She would not typically have performed this newspaper round and had agreed to do the job for one week as the paper boy who normally did the round was on holiday. Jeanette was wearing a white cotton t-shirt with her name embroidered in red letters on the left shoulder. She had light brown trousers and white plimsolls. Seven minutes later, the two girls discovered Jeanette's bicycle lying in the middle of the road. Several newspapers she had been scheduled to deliver were scattered across the tarmac. Approximately 25 minutes after the discovery, Jeanette's parents returned to Barton Farm Cottage from a shopping trip to Exeter. The girls had Tate's bicycle with them and asked if she was at home. When Tate's father said that his daughter was not at home, he and his mother, assisted by several friends and neighbours, began a search around Withen Road. At 5 p.m., John Tate reported his daughter missing to the Devon and Cornwall Police. So let's look at the timeline so far before we carry on. So at 3.28, two friends talked to Jeanette. Seven minutes later, her bicycle was found lying on the road by the two friends. This would make the time at 3.35 p.m. At 4 p.m., Jeanette's parents learn of her disappearance. From 4 p.m., parents, neighbours and friends start a search. At 5 p.m., John Tate reports his daughter missing to the police. This is a small time scale, and you would think that with the efforts of everyone in that golden hour and a half, that some sort of evidence would have been seen. Did the abductor use the countryside or wooded area to their benefit? If this is the case, then he or she was a local, or somebody who frequented this area. They knew the area well, and trusted their crime would go undiscovered. Because this wasn't her normal paper round routine, 
Was this a spur of the moment abduction? Could she have been observed the days leading up to this Saturday? Did the abductor have prior knowledge of Jeanette's parents' Saturday shopping trip? Was the abductor known to the family? Now I'll move on to the police and their investigation. Within hours of Jeanette's disappearance, police mounted an extensive search. 70, yeah that's 70, uniformed policemen and 50 detectives from Devon and Cornwall Police were also assisted by mounted officers from Avon and Somerset Police. All ponds in the Aylesbury area were searched by underwater search units and search dogs assisted the police in their search of surrounding terrain. Devon and Cornwall Police discounted the possibility of Jeanette running away from home as at the time of her disappearance she had no personal possessions beyond the clothing she was wearing. She had also left behind in her bedroom money she had been saving for an upcoming family holiday. The money collected from the customers on the home newspaper round was still in her purse on the bicycle. The possibility of a hit and run traffic accident was also ruled out as no tire marks were found on the road and her bicycle was undamaged. Kidnapping was initially considered as a possibility, although both Devon and Cornwall Police and Jeanette's family gradually discounted this possibility. Eyewitnesses reported seeing a maroon Triumph or similar vehicle upon Withan Road at around the time of the disappearance, and police issued a photofit picture of a man they wanted to question in relation to the incident. The man was described as being a very handsome individual in his early twenties with a pale complexion, short dark hair, who had been wearing a light coloured shirt. Despite the police investigation and a search of the surrounding countryside involving thousands of volunteers, Jeanette's disappearance remains unexplained. In 2002, DNA belonging to, the t to Jeanette was found on one of her jumpers kept by her mother which would allow her body to be identified if discovered. On the 25th anniversary of the case in 2003, Jeanette's parents both stated their belief that she was no longer alive. Police have amassed more than 20,000 index cards in a filing system related to the case, which is stored at the Devon and Cornwall Police Headquarters in Exeter. I'm sure you agree this is a lot to think about, and have you had any alarm bells ringing? Something not seemingly sitting right? In the next episode, I look at the suspects and the revelation that perhaps all was not well within the Tate family circle. Jeanette would be around 57 years of age now, and if allowed to live, she could have been married and also be a grandmother. This case, I'm sure, will grip you, and some of the research may shock you. But that's all in the next episode. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye now.